everybody. Welcome to Church Online. I'm Pastor Dave DeSabatino. I'm the lead pastor of Journey Church. If you're joining us today and maybe this is your first time, we want to welcome you. You know, we're just going to go into worship in a few minutes. And right after that, we've got a few things we want to let you know about. And we'll go into our new summer series today. We're excited. It is summer. I want to welcome you to join into worship with us at this time.
crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you and to your careful when I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing, and all you have given me, Jesus, bring me out of me in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing. All you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Oh, Jesus, bring new Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The end. 
entrance sealed by heavy storm, Messiah still and all of
You know, it's just good that we can worship like this together and, and maybe we are apart, but together by the Spirit, He draws us closer to Him. So I'm just going to ask you to, to lean into Jesus today, to, to lean in, to listen to His voice, especially over the summer season. You know what? This is a time where we get to rest and relax and maybe have some vacation and, and do things out of the, the, the norm routine and, and maybe take some extra time this summer to enjoy life, to uh, look at the mountains, enjoy the sun, and to listen to the voice of God together. You know, if you're connecting with us today, maybe this is your first time, we would love to connect with you. One of the ways you can do that very simply today is in our chat room, say hello, say hi, let us know how we can serve you. If you need some prayer, someone to pray with you, uh, we would love to do that. Or simply send us an email, connect at myjourney.church, and we would love to help you and serve you in any way we can possibly uh, maybe give you some information, some, some insight as to what's going on around here. A couple of things we wanna let you know about, and that is our church camp out is coming. Uh, very soon, so make sure you register to be a part of that. Um, also, our backpack drive is in full force. July 24th is the last day to bring a backpack full of supplies for kids in the fall semester. Believe it or not, we're thinking about it now for the fall semester. So if you want to do some shopping, bring those backpacks in. If you would just like to send a donation, please feel free to do that. We'd love to be able to support kids as they go back to school in the fall. I uh, wanna say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. You make what we do every week possible. It's your, your donations, your financial stewardship that allows us to meet the needs of people in our community through the backpack drive, through uh, different things that we do in our city to make a difference. It helps us to turn on the lights, but more importantly, it helps us to minister to people who are in need. So I wanna say thank you from the bottom of our hearts to continue serving in this capacity, continue giving. Uh, if you're not yet a Kingdom Partner, simply go online, Kingdom Partners, and find out how you can donate today. Thank you for your generosity in your giving, your tithes, your gifts are making a difference. There's many ways to do that today, so please find a way that makes sense for you. All right, without further ado, we're gonna go into the message in just a moment. And we've got Josh Thomas, one of our young leaders here at the church who leads in a number of different areas. He is gonna present his life verse, a verse that has spoken to him as we go into our series today. Hello Journey Church, my name is Joshua Thomas. I'm the Assistant Kids Ministry Director here as well as the Tweens Director. So that basically means that on Sunday mornings, typically I'm not in the sanctuary, I'm not preaching, but I'm upstairs in the Kids Ministry area teaching kids about the Word of God and also running around a lot. We have, we have lots of fun up there, we teach them about God, we run around, we just do a lot of activities up there. It's great, I love what I do. And on Fridays, every other week, I'm also up in the kids' ministry space where we have our tweens events, where we have kids, students in grades four to six gather and just, again, have fun, learn about God, and build relationship with each other. We're hoping that we can establish long-lasting relationships with these kids between ourselves and between them so that they get those lifelong relationships and friendships that really carry you throughout your whole life. So I want to encourage you, if you're a parent who has a student in grades four to six, I want to encourage you to send them to tweens so they can really experience uh, what it is to 
fully have fun with people their age and learn about God at the same time. It's a great experience for them to just build relationships, have fun, and do things like that. Uh, a little bit more about myself other than my job positions is I'm actually a university student right now. I'm in, going into my third year of university uh, at Ambrose University where I'm studying Christian studies. Now, this means that I really have, I'm really in the, in the, in the depth of all of the insanity of university. I've just gone through a really crazy semester and it's a, a definite reality where you have those sleepless nights. I've had those and those papers due at like 11.59 and you submit that at 5 a.m. the next morning hoping that the prof doesn't exactly see that you snuck it in a little bit later than usual and getting all of those sleepless nights and deprived, uh, sleep deprived moments. But it also means that I'm, I'm really busy running around a lot, but it's great. There, I, I love what I'm learning at Ambrose, but it's definitely like, if you have had a university experience, you can relate to those, those moments of just, oh boy, I gotta get this assignment done. Oh no, it's 11.59? Oh, wait. Two hours passed already. It's two o'clock. Oh no, I got to submit this no matter what. So that's, that's, that's the struggle I'm in in a little bit. So one of the other things, uh, I'm always kind of busy right now with, uh, with my work, with university and all of these things. And one of the things that keeps me busy is that I have to do a lot of shopping for the events here at church, uh, tweens, kids ministry, all of that stuff. So the Walmart uh, that's nearby the church has definitely become a friend of mine where we go and we just, we grab a bunch of supplies, stuff like that. It's, it's a good resource, but also outside of the Walmart, sometimes there's people with signs. Uh, I noticed them here and there, uh, but definitely a little bit more last year. Uh, I was going into a Walmart and I saw a person with a sign that read, uh, I, I just lost my job and I need to feed my family for today. And I went inside the store to finish my shopping, looking for stuff. And as I was exiting the store, I remembered the person that was there with the sign. And I was thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I should uh, just go and uh, pick up some stuff for them. Oh, maybe I can give them a little bit of cash. But then something went into my mind. A little thought weasels, weaseled its way into my head. And it was, maybe somebody else will help them. Somebody else will help them. I don't have to help them. And this thought, it is a really dangerous thought that often comes into our heads. That somebody else can take care of a person. That somebody else can deal with this issue. But this thought, I believe, is one of the most dangerous thoughts that can sneak into our head when it comes to us being Christians. Because it takes the responsibility away from us and takes the responsibility that Jesus gives us to bring justice to this world, which is why I believe that Micah 6.8, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And this is what he requires of you, to seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Now, if we let this, this idea of somebody else will help these people sneak into our head, then we can't fulfill the call from Micah 6.8. There are two sides to a coin. And on one side lies justice, and the other side lies righteousness. They're held together in relationship with each other. And this holy tension and holy relationship comes from how far and different these ideas can become when they're taken to their extremes. On one side, righteousness can be taken too far and be too much about the law, the letter of the law, carrying all of that out. 
For me, a few weeks ago, I got sick. And that meant that I had to miss a lot of work and I couldn't go to church on Sunday. And for me, these things really made me upset. They caused me to be upset with myself, that I couldn't get things done, that I needed to get, get done, that I needed to finish. I also grew frustrated because I felt a responsibility that I had to be at the church. I, had, I felt a responsibility to, cre to create the sense of self-righteousness that comes from doing the work of God for God. And I was later on convicted by my thoughts. When I realized I was trying to do things for God, but almost to prove my own righteousness, to prove my own self-righteousness. But in reality, we have to accept the grace that is offered through Jesus that gives us our righteousness. But to continue in that righteousness given to us by Jesus, we must also carry out justice. We must act justly. We cannot be righteous without justice, and we cannot fulfill God's justice without righteousness. The coin of justice and righteousness is one connected unit. It's still the same thing. It is one unit that is inseparable from each other. But let's be honest. In our own power, we cannot save the world. Even though we'd, we'd like to try, we'd like to go out and save everything. But in our own power, we can't. Justice outside of its relationship with righteousness results in humanism. Though that's where we try to save the world on our own, through our own means, without God. Despite all our works, God is the only one who can actually save the world. Despite all of the things that we think that we can accomplish on our own, God is the one who can save the world. And this, this sense of justice, it is admirable. And humanism is an admirable goal. But on its own, it cannot achieve what it wants to. On its own, without God separated, with God separated from it, justice cannot achieve what it needs to. This is why we partner in the redeeming work of God, that is, to bring justice to the world through the righteousness of God. I tend not to fall into the trap of humanism and that, but that's because my crutch comes through my desire for self-righteousness. And the other trap can often come in the form of us creating a reality in our own heads when we think that we are changing the world, when we're typing behind a keyboard, or we believe we can change the world without God. The fulfillment of the call of Micah 6.8 comes from our surrender to the righteousness of God given through Jesus. And in return, we are required to act justly. This is the holy exchange. We are given our righteousness and then required to act justly because His justice is the only thing that can save the world. Often we can really get caught up in what's going on in the world, all of the bad things, and we can lose sight of what it actually means to do justice. We can get distracted by so many crises and feel so overwhelmed. But when we get caught up in that, we lose sight of what justice actually is, what we can do.
for justice. We can post on our Instagram stories. We can send tweets. We can comment on Facebook. But if we, the, if we don't do anything, then what is the point? If we, the people of God, don't rise, what's the point? We must target this apathy within our own hearts. And I'm preaching to myself right now. I've had that apathy within my own heart where I, I thought that the person at Walmart could be helped by somebody else. It's always that thought of somebody else that creates this sense, sense of apathy. Now, we must do justice because we have been transformed by the righteousness of God. That transformation means that we must act within that transformation. That means we must do justice. The prophets of ancient Israel really understood this relationship between justice and righteousness very well. And it comes with the way that they define the words Sadaka and Mishpat. And these are the words in ancient Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, used to represent justice and righteousness. When we are doing Sadaka, we are doing Mishpat. When we are bringing justice, we are acting in righteousness. When we are doing Sadaka, we are doing justice. When we're carrying on our righteousness, we actually must perform mishpat, justice. The definitions of both of these ancient Hebrew words are understood to be complementary to each other. To be righteous is to act out justly. And justice is the idea of leveling the playing field for the people to be brought together, be humble, to be, be proud to be humbled, and the lowly to be uplifted. It's the leveling of society. And this is what, and this is the call of the Christian, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. We cannot see these injustices around us and think that somebody else will deal with them. We can't let that apathy be there. We cannot talk about injustices and then wait for somebody else to start doing something. Our righteousness requires that we act within our justice, which means we must act and participate as the hands and the feet of Jesus. I have fallen into the trap of making my own self-righteousness and have seen others fall into the other trap of wanting to save the world. But don't get me wrong, both of these things are excellent aims, but they must be held together. So how do we practically do these things? How do we practically live out justice and righteousness? The best example to follow is actually the person himself, Jesus Christ. He lived out justice and righteousness, and he himself was justice and righteousness. He was with the widow and the orphan, and he raised the lowly. He was with those who were oppressed. So then, let us be imitators of Christ. Shall the body of Christ stand still? Shall we, shall we be idle, or should we act? Shall we actually rise to the occasion? Now, I know that this is hard calling, and it but justice can look different for everyone in the way that they practice it. We all know that we can't, well, I know that we all can't be Mother Teresa. I know that I can't. I'm a college student. I'm busy. I have lots of things to do. I'm managing relationships. I'm managing jobs. I'm managing school. I'm busy. There are those out there who are parents. You have, you're looking after your kids. You're looking after a whole bunch of things in your house. Everybody is busy, but we still must act. I still must act. Can we be fathers to the fatherless, mothers to the motherless, 
There are those amongst us in this church and in this city who need those parental figures. And you can be that. We can be that for them. If you're a father, a mother, a grandmother, a grandfather, a a single person, you can be that for somebody. Take a student out once in a while and show them the love of Christ. Teach them, love on them, and just show them that they are loved. And that can be really transformative on their lives for the rest of their lives. It can change the trajectory of one person's life if you do that. In the same way, can we mentor the young? Can we have generational mentorship? Can we have those who are full of their years mentor those who haven't experienced everything yet? Can we have parents raising up their children in the way of the Lord so they might not turn from the way of righteousness? That's also another way to fulfill justice. These are all ways to call, you, call us together to fulfill this call of justice. These are things that we can do right now in this city, in this moment. Furthermore, can we see people, when we see people with signs, when I see people with signs in front of Walmart sitting there, we shouldn't think it's somebody else's responsibility. We should take that onus and we should be the hands and the feet of Jesus to them. For those who don't have responsibilities in families yet, we can do so much more to serve the problems of the world instead of doing something, instead of doing nothing. Can we partner with organizations? Let's partner with organizations in the city. Uh, let's partner with the Mustard Seed, Salvation Armies, and so much more within the city that help carry the burden of others who cannot carry it on their own. There are also uh, those of us who feel the call to missions uh, outside of our city. So you can participate with cha- transforming the world that way. Let us care for the widows and the orphans in our midst. Let's take the burden from the people that are carrying heavy burdens. Let's cook meals for those who need them. Let's walk with people through the valley of the shadow of death. Can we also participate with kingdom partners? This is why we do kingdom partners, so we can show God's justice to this world through that. And you can participate with that by donating to that, donating to Kingdom Partners. That's where we're sending, we're we're supporting missionaries, organizations in this city and all across the world to carry out God's justice. That, That is why we do Kingdom Partners. I want to invite you to get to know this Jesus that we've been talking about this whole time. If you don't already know him. I want to invite you into this relationship with him because I, when I made my relationship with Jesus so many years ago, I was transformed from the inside out. My experience has been where I have been in the church all of my life, but I didn't really get to know who God truly was until I made my faith my own. And when I did that, I was transformed by His righteousness to to have this burden for other people. And sometimes I can ignore that burden and become apathetic towards that burden. But there's there's this, this fire within me that doesn't allow me to ignore these things anymore. When I... I have become transformed by Jesus. So if you want to be transformed with Jesus today, let me pray with you. God, thank you so much for sending your son to pay for all of my sins. Thank you that he has redeemed me and saved me, set me free. And I just, I want to give you my life so that you can transform me from the inside out so that I can be your hands and feet of justice and righteousness in this world. 
If you said that prayer, we are so excited today. We are, we are ecstatic to see that you have joined into the kingdom of God where we can carry out the mission of justice and righteousness today. And if you, you have already said that prayer, if you already know Jesus, I want to encourage you, if you're feeling apathetic towards these things, that that apathy would be broken, that we would be set free from that together. And I'll encourage you lastly with this one last thing. To make things full circle, a couple of months ago, I went to a shopper's drug mart and another person was sitting outside of the shopper's and I, I noticed that he was homeless and he needed some stuff. So I went into the shoppers and I bought the stuff I needed to. And as I was coming up, coming out, the thought did come into my head that somebody else can help this person. But I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, Josh, you are that person. You can be that person. So I went back in the store, purchased a bunch of stuff for this person, and uh, left him a bag of food. That's our, that, that, that's, that should give us hope that we don't have to stay this way, that we can be transformed, that we don't have to let apathy win, that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus today.